Okay, today we're going to be discussing a project of ours, and uh, this has to deal with uh, vapor compression. So, what I've got here is a little mock Tesla turbine. It's a little toy that we're completing, but it's open so you can see the nozzle coming in. And this is a typical Tesla turbine, uh, eight inch disc. Um, there's 10 discs in there, smooth discs. This is hooked up and being run by a compressor at the moment with a inverter drive system. Tim, go get me some electric for that, please. So this is the inverter drive system. It's an SJ700 Hitachi, and we're going to be running this at uh, approximately 50, 60 hertz. Uh, let's see what we got her set for here, Tim. Function, we'll go into F function one. Okay, we're gonna be running it at 50 hertz. We'll go back to the D function. <clears throat> D1 will give us the, um, give us the hertz. All right, this is a seven and a half horsepower compressor that is uh, pulling the intake. The intake has been piped in to this hot tank over here. Now it is a liquid filled tank. There's two of them hooked together. And uh, this pipe comes in, goes up, over, and into the tank. So the tank is pulling a, a vacuum through this compressor, and it is pulling this air into the compressor from that tank. Now there's a very little air space in that tank, and it's pulling it into the compressor, compressing that, and then feeding the Tesla turbine. Uh, the Tesla turbine then has a discharge. It has two, one on the other side, one here, but that one is plugged off and this one is connected and runs with this hose all the way back into the tank. So we'll walk over to the back side of the tank. And here is the hose coming in from the Tesla turbine and it is pulling it into the tank with a check valve and this has got a spar unit so there's a pipe that goes down in here that causes any air or vapor water vapor to enter the tank go underneath the water and this tank is filled nearly to the brim a 1069 gallon tank and we're probably a um, thousand gallons in it right now so there's just about six inches of airspace. Tim go get me the temperature probe we'll show you the temperature of this tank right now I think it's about a hundred degrees these are our waste heat tanks. They're also hooked to the boiler. They can also be hooked to our solar panel array. So the waste heat comes from a number of sources, primarily our water-cooled compressor that puts out 100, 150 degree water. But uh, it's the end of the day. It is now 101.5 degrees and uh, very consistent 101.5 degrees. Now, I want him to uh, go over there. We'll, we'll actually go together and we'll The concept is we're going to pull a certain amount of air which is in that tank, and this is recirculated, and it bubbles through, it picks up condensate, and it evaporates that condensate. That condensate then enters the turbine, or the, the compressor, where it is amplified in temperature, and the temperature is literally going to come out at steam temperature, which is what's running the Tesla. And then it expands that, and we'll show you the differential, and then it sucks it right back into the tank. Now that, because it has air, it's not just vapor, the air will expand and the water vapor will continue to expand until it condenses. So we're gonna show you, we got steam uh, mixed with air, and uh, it will turn into a completely condensed liquid and the vapor, which is uh, super superheated vapor, which goes back into the tank pulls water vapor back out of the tank and then brings it right back into the compressor where it's compressed. The heat, latent heat, is, is uh, uh, extracted via vapor compression. The temperature rises, the pressure rises, and that runs a turbine. And we'll be able to get more out of this system. Now, next uh, we're gonna show you, we're gonna hook a motor to this and it's going to actually be running off of the grid and it will produce more energy through heat extraction then it is pulling off the grid. So we end up with a surplus using 
waste heat, which is well below um, boiling temperature. You got the temperature probe there, Tim? No. There we go. Okay. All right. So here we go. We know the tank temperature is 101.5. Go ahead and start the compressor here. It's going to get noisy, so we'll mostly just show you what's going on. This is the inlet, so this is now pulling this vapor from the tank at 88.5 degrees. Compressor discharge is rising rapidly, 177 degrees, 180. You can see the water vapor forming as this is a floating steam temperature. We're just ramping up here slowly. Hundred and ninety-five degrees now, hundred and ninety-four. 90, 90 degrees. Compressor, 195, 196, 97. Tesla discharge, 117. The water vapor and the condensed and the gases are coming back in, mostly condensate, and the tank is in fact bubbling, it's boiling uh, the vapor and the condensate back down through the bottom of the tank, which is stirring the tank up, and the tank temperature is in fact going to drop. And you can hear that as we continue to increase uh, speed now, that's starting to uh, increase temperature as it's pulling the latent heat out of this tank. And this tank is, the temperature is going to drop on this tank. So this is kind of like a vapor chilling. And as the condensate and the superheated uh, dry air is coming back into the tank, it absorbs latent heat, absorbs water vapor, and that gets sucked back to the compressor for compression. So it is a, we're not violating any laws here. The tank temperature is falling, 101.4 now, uh, bouncing around a little bit, but uh, 101.5, 101.546, 1 but this will continue as this continues to ramp up and you can hear the Tesla in the background. Now we're at 101.4 I saw. Pulling heat out of this tank at a very low temperature. Well below steam temperature. You can't do much with hot water. There's 101.4 solid. So the tank is slowly dropping in temperature and the air from, from the Tesla and the condensed uh, water vapor in the form of condensate is entering the tank and this is uh, bubbling back through.
temperature now. 235 degrees. So we're above steam temperature and rising, 237. Inlet, 100 degrees. That's coming directly out of the tank. Super saturated water vapor and air mixture. Compresses to 238 degrees. 3.8 kilowatts worth of usage. Now later we'll show you what we're getting out of the turbine. discuss this uh, more at length later but uh, this is uh, a combination of a Tesla turbine vapor compression with a mild or low vacuum chiller and it's just water so we're using water vapor and we're only extracting the latent heat by compressing that steam Compressing the water vapor, which we have evaporated out of the tank, using the heat discharge of the Tesla turbine and the waste heat, we were coming in at about 250 degrees and we we're leaving at about 125. So we were extracting 125 degrees per pound of vapor and uh, air mixture. And uh, that is uh, the, 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 where the chiller comes in. That will continue to pull down the temperature in the tank and theoretically we could get temperatures uh, well below um, 40, 50, 60 degrees. We can actually pull that tank temperature down uh, because we're evaporating it with the discharge which is 125 degree heated air um, and that is the, the percentage of uh, water vapor. All the water that had turned into vapor that was superheated and expanded in the turbine was condensed into water droplets that re-entered the tank, cooled the tank down, um, and then the, the heated air, which is being recirculated, um, is being pulled back in and resaturated through a bubbling process um, and an evaporational process. And that is a, a combination of vapor compression, which is what's happening in the compressor, uh, chilling, which is the uh, superheated vapor uh, uh, and, and air, which is then picking up that water vapor, causing the temperature to rapidly decline in the tank um, through evaporational cooling. 
and then the process repeats itself. So it's just a closed loop system. Um, no steam is really lost, no vapor is lost. It's completely uh, closed uh, from the standpoint that uh, um, there is no vacuum and there is no pressure in the tank and yet we are able to uh, basically run a steam turbine using a conventional compressor. Um, my idea of a green machine and basically you've just seen um, the exact same thing. Now we're going to prove this uh, with a much larger Tesla turbine. That one is about uh, oh, 40, 50 percent efficient as far as we can figure. And uh, so we would probably be putting out about two kilowatts. So we're still using energy in this particular demonstration. Um, but we will be putting together a 60 inch uh, diameter Tesla turbine, which will be the largest Tesla turbine uh, ever built since 1914. Uh, 1913, I think Tesla built a 15 blade, 60 inch diameter turbine. Um, we're building a 60 uh, inch diameter, 16 blade turbine. So uh, we'll call Guinness later. But um, this is uh, the concept and it will allow us uh, to extract energy out of waste heat well below steam temperature through vapor compression and evaporational chilling using nothing more than standard water. Don't need any chlorofluorocarbons, we don't need any C4, we don't, or uh, uh, RC3 or whatever it is, uh, we don't need any Freon, we can do it with just water vapor, which by the way has 10 times the amount of ability to store latent heat that typical refrigerants today uh, have, and it's nothing more than just regular water vapor. So, um, till the next uh, video, we'll hook that up with a motor and uh, some gauges, and we'll show you a positive flow of energy, which we expect to be able to hit um, somewhere around 130, 140 degree temperatures, which is at least 40 to 50 degree temperatures below typical um, uh, organic Rankine cycle um, extraction uh, of waste heat because we do not use a separate heat exchanger. The heat exchanger in fact is the modest working fluid and so we have a huge advantage um, not to mention that we have the ability to capture 10 times the amount of latent heat um, that typical refrigerants do. So but it does require a turbine that can handle condensing uh, in the turbine because it is and it does have to um, um, uh, be safe enough to run. So we're not pressurizing any of these vessels, just the compressor, which in fact is made for that very same purpose. And uh, it's just a conventional compressor, the Tesla turbine. Um, uh, we've made a few little minor changes here or there, but it's basically Tesla's uh, um, patented version. Uh, 10 discs, eight inches diameter, smooth plates. Um, and um, I think that's, I've run a little too long for this video. So hopefully you can follow it. Mostly this is for me and posterity. But um, if you've got any questions, drop me a line and I'll try to answer them uh, as soon as possible. All right. Thank you.